بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد ايها الاحباب may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and bless you and forgive us and forgive you and guide us and guide you <coughs> to that which is right and correct recent events controversy and statements based on new methodologies have caused us to analyze the dawah propaganda techniques and theories of callers to Islam like Yasser Qadi and Nu'man Ali Khan to try to understand where we are as a community and where so-called representatives and leaders within the community are taking us and reassess how they influence our youth this is imperative ayul ahbab and this is from the bab of nasiha and i ask that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it sincerely sincerely for his sake subhana and that Allah puts it on our scale of good deeds, not on our scale of bad deeds, of backbiting and namima and ghiba. But in accordance with the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, where he said, Salawatu Rabbi wa salamu alayhi, Adina Nasiha, Adina Nasiha, Adina Nasiha. Qalu liman, Qala lillahi, Wali kitabihi, Wali rasulihi, Wali a'immatul muslimin wa ammatihim. The Prophet والسلام, said in Sahih Muslim, the religion is sincere advice, and he said it three times. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Lillah to Allah. Wali kitabihi and to his book. Wali rasulihi and to his Prophet والسلام, and to the leader of the Muslims and the general Muslims. So from the point of view of advice to myself and my brothers and sisters in general, the youth, and especially specifically the youth in Seattle, Washington who do not have access, generally, to the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah. Nor do people there generally take them to the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah. Instead, we have students of knowledge and we have people of knowledge there, but they don't refer the people back to those who have more knowledge and more right and can deal with those issues that may need to be dealt with from those who have more knowledge and wisdom. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al-kareem, Fasalah li dhikri in kuntum la ta'alamun. Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. And the reason for this assessment and encouragement to leave off, or the reason for this assessment is due to recent statements that we've heard <coughs> from some of those particular, those individuals that I mentioned regarding encouraging the people to leave off classical interpretations of Islam and this is what has been quoted and recorded meaning the madhab of the salaf of this ummah and the deliberate effort to distance the youth or distant <clears throat> distance the youth in, in the West from the scholars of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah who serve the religion from around the world under the premise as they claim that they do not fully understand the issues of the West and are disconnected meaning the scholars don't understand what's going on in the ground in America and in the UK and in France and in Italy and in Spain and what have you Ayullah Bab this is not to take away the, the importance of us having knowledge and having raising ulama, hopefully in the future. That we need this in the West. We do need those people who know the issues, who are there on the ground, know the people, come from the people, and can disseminate that knowledge. But never will that be a cause, an excuse for severing the ties. Will those who have more knowledge, more gray in their beards, and have the wisdom and hikmah of dealing 
with issues, Elmia knowledge based issues that we need. We need understanding, we need encouragement to come back to the Kitab wa Sunnah. The Prophet والسلام, as we mentioned, said the deen is uh, uh, sincere advice. Adin al Siha. And from the types of Nasiha that we can give is advising our brothers and sisters and clarifying and illustrating and refuting innovated understandings. Why are they innovated understandings? Because by Allah, we haven't heard these kind of statements from the people of the past, even Ahlul Bidah from the past. But it's nowadays we have a new da'wah and I don't say that it doesn't arise from a need. We do have a need to deal with our affairs internally. We have a need for that. But where the people innovate is they go beyond the HUD. Tajawuz al HUD, they go beyond the boundaries. And they actually literally say, as the Asr said, may Allah guide us in Him, that we should sever the ties. I want to sever the ties, or as He said, between our youth and the scholars from Saudi Arabia and so forth. Why? And, and tie them and bind them to people like Suhaib Hassan in uh, the UK or uh, some of the other individuals that we have in America who are known for their call. Ayul Ahbab also the Prophet said, "Men ra'a minkum munkaran fil yughayruhu bi yad, fa in lam yastati' fi bilisanihi, fa in lam yastati' fi biqalbihi, wa dhalika adu fil iman." Ruwahu Muslim. The Prophet said, "Whoever sees a munkar, then change it with his hand, and if he's unable to do so, he should change it with his tongue, speak out against it, and if he's unable to do so, then he should change it with his heart, and that's the weakest form of iman." So from We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sincerity that this be a part of changing the munkar that we witness, of people speaking about the deen, people innovating in the deen who know better. Yasir Qadi knows better. Nu'man Ali Khan, I don't know what he knows, but I hear he's well versed in the Quran. He, that's great, he knows the Quran. But you need the Sunnah. As Imam Baba Hari said, Al Islam, who was Sunnah, was Sunnah to heal Islam. That Islam is a Sunnah and the Sunnah is Islam. You can't have one without the other. The Prophet والسلام, said in the hadith, the hadith of Hudayfa bin Yaman, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, كان الناس يسألون رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن الخير وكنت أسأله عن الشر مخافة أن يدركني The people used to ask the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم about the good and I used to ask him about the evil out of a fear that I that it may I, I, I may fall into it or it may happen to me the evil فَقُلْتُ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِنَّ كُنَّ فِي جَاهِلِيَّ وَالشَّرِّ فَجَاءَنَ اللَّهُ بِهَذَا الْخَيْرِ فَهَلْ بَعْدَ هَذَا الْخَيْرِ مِنَ الشَّرِّ Hudayfa رضي الله تعالى عنه, he asked the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام, he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم, we used to be in Jahiliyyah. Isn't that like our case? We came to Islam. وَالشَّرِّ and evil, doing all kind of practices. And Allah gave us, came to us with this goodness, meaning the goodness of Islam, the purity of Islam was sunnah. After this khair, will there be evil? After this good, will there be evil? The Prophet ﷺ said, Naam. He said, Yes. Kultu, wa hal badadalika sharm al khair? And after that evil, will there be good? The Prophet ﷺ said, Naam. Wa fihi dukhnun. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Yes, and there will be dukhun. He said, Kultu, 
وما دخنه يا رسول الله what is دخن يا رسول الله the prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said قوم يهدون بغير هدي تعرف منه وتنكر the prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said there will be a people that will call to guidance without my guidance you will know them <coughs> and you will وتنكر قلت فهل بعد ذا الخير من الشر then he said after that goodness or after uh, after that شر وهل بعد ذلك خير من الشر so you will know them and they won't call to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sunnah and you will know them and you will deny them and he said after that goodness will they be evil the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said naam du'atun ala abwaab jahannam man ajabahum ilayha qadhafuhu fiha the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said yes there will be uh, callers du'at their callers, their dais. Sheikh, a, a, a man, I listened to a video where he praised Nu'man Ali Khan to the extent he said, Alama, come on. A'udhu billah. Jazallah khairan, the brother knows Arabic and he teaches Arabic. Jazallah khairan, he's had hif the Quran, maybe has good tijweed. Alama? Wallahu musta'an. May Allah help us from being misguided. A person sent a video to me or a comment to me when I spoke out from the Bab and the Siha out of advice about uh, the other one the, uh, from South Africa who does all the ta'wilat with the, Quran, with the hadith. Um, Imran Hussein. He said, and he wrote to me in Arabic. I couldn't believe this man is an Arab, knows the Arabic language. And he said to me these words. He said that this is like you speaking against Imran Hussein is like the test that Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah went through. And uh, Imran Hussein is better than Shaykh al-Islam. Wallahi, he said that. I can't believe that, Ya Akhwan. So it shows you some of the people are so far. Really, in fact, so far from Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Madhab of the Salaf and really knowing the Qawaid and principles of the Deen that they could say something. There's no excuse. You cannot say anything but this person is ignorant. I don't care if the person memorized the Quran and the six Sunnahs to say a statement like that. That's Dalil, evidence on his ignorance. That you would say someone who in every thin of Islam, every science in Islam was known that the people thought that that was his, his specialty because he was he had itqan in it as if he was speaking as if he was from the Salaf this is what they said about Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and you're going to compare that to Imran Hussein Wallahum Musta'an. may Allah guide us and guide the people the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam let us know du'at ala abwaab jahannam man ajabahum ilayha qadhafu fiha so there's going to be callers to the hellfire. Whoever takes from them, accepts from them, follows them, will enter it into the fire. Wa'iyadun billah. Ayul Ahbab, when we hear these newly invented statements of people trying to cut us off from the scholars, Nu'man Ali Khan, he mentioned about the need to prioritize ourselves with the Qur'an. We can accept that. But why would you only emphasize the Qur'an? That's what I kind of found a bit strange. But let's, let's put that aside. Because the Qur'an tells us to follow the Sunnah. أَتِيُ اللَّهُ وَأَتِيُ رُسُولُ فَانْتَنَزَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرَدُوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allah says Allah commands us Whenever Allah commands something It's evidence that it's an obligation the, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Follow Allah Obey Allah And obey His messenger And another ayat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Obey Allah And obey His uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَإِنْتَنَزَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرَدُوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ If you disagree over something Then return it to Allah And His messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we have to follow the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. That's Islam. As Imam Baba Hadi said, Islam huwa sunnah wa sunnatu hiya al-Islam. Ayyul Ahbab, and may Allah bless us and bless you and love you, love us and love you, and forgive us and forgive you. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَاذَ بَعْدَ الْحَقِّ إِلَّا الضَّلَالِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and after the truth, what is there except misguidance? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنْ هَذَ صَرَاتِ مُسْتَقِيمٍ فَاتَّبِعُوهُ وَلَا تَأْتَبِعُوا سُبُولُ فَتَفَرَّكُمْ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ Verily, this is my straight path. Then follow it. Again, أَمْرُ يُفِيدُ وُجُودُ A command, it's an obligation. وَلَا تَأْتَبِعُوا سُبُولُ And do not follow the various paths. فَتَفَرَّكَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ And then divide upon you know, divide away in, uh, on these, uh, uh, from the main, the straight path. Taking new paths, newly invented ways. I don't think any of those guys would disagree with these ayats. But where we differ is the practice and implementation of these ayat. And the practice and implementation of the methodology of the Prophet ﷺ. How is it that we can prioritize our affairs in America, as Nu'man said, that we should focus on the apostasy of people, uh, zina and those things. Yes, you're right. You're right that we need to deal with those issues. Those are very important issues that we need to speak about. But he went to such an extreme that he belittled Tawheed. Why? Why did he belittle Tawheed? Khalid, how can you say he belittled Tawheed? I say this because he said, what means? And I'm not, I can't directly quote, I should have written it down. But the man said, that we shouldn't get into these theological debates about where Allah is. And is Allah everywhere Allah above the seven heavens? billah. How could you say something like this? How could a person who knows who's a caller to Islam, Islam is Islam lillah to min shirku ahli? How could someone who believes in the religion, a deen al qayyimah the straight path, the deen of Tawheed, what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Fi kitab al kareem, wa ma khalaqtu al jinn wa la inti lili abudun. This is our priority. We didn't create, I, I even created mankind in jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. Priority. Priority. And they say priority number one, that is the priority. Everything else is a part of that. When you call people away from zina and adultery and, and all the other sins and violence and extremism, it's to Tawheed. It's to Tawheed. Because a person can be an extremist and still enter paradise. A person can be an adulterer and still enter paradise. But a person cannot die on paganism. And kufr was shirk. And the major zulm. What major, you know, that, that which takes you out of the fold of Islam. No akid of Islam. And still get to paradise. That's not the belief of Ahlul Sunnah with Jama'ah. So anyone who tells you otherwise, that we have other priorities than what, and then they use the Quran, but the Quran is a hujjah. Alayhi. The Quran is not a proof for you, it's a proof against you. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, as we just mentioned that ayat, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and I've sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and avoid ta'gut. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabil kareem wa'budullahu wa la tushriku bi shay'in and worship Allah alone and do not associate partners with him a nafi wal ithbat or ithbat wa nafi wa'budullaha this is Allah affirming tawheed in all of its forms tawheed al rububiyyah tawheed al uluhiyah tawheed al asma'i wa sifat but when you say that it's okay that we shouldn't get in theological debates about those issues, what are you saying about Tawheed? How are you be that's a belittlement of Tawheed. There's no way you can, a logical person can argue to me that that is not belittling Tawheed. That we shouldn't get into theological debates. Allah doesn't mean, are you, where are you coming from? How could you memorize the Quran and tell me that? What Quran are you reading? What are you reading? What do you understand from the Qur'an? All those verses, Allah is ordering you to worship Him and Him alone. And the people, the Salaf of this Ummah, the Mufassireen, the people who explain this, let us know clearly, clearly, wadah, about those categories of Tawheed. Imam Abu Hanifa, would you believe it? Use the terms, Rububiyyah, use the term, Uluhiyyah, 
And Al Asma wa Sifat is well known to the Salaf. Many books to uh, Kitab al Tawheed, Ibn Khuzayma, uh, Imam Bayhaqi, all these Imams. Who, who, and, and the Salaf of this Ummah who talked about Al Asma'i wa Sifat. So the categories of Tawheed have been articulated, even if it wasn't directly articulated. And those were the priorities and always will be. What did the Prophet say in the Hadith of Mu'adh? Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, كُنْتُ رَدِيفَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمَ الْحِمَارِ فَقَالَ لِي يَا مُعَاذِ أَتَدْرِي مَا حَقَّ اللَّهُ عَلِي بَادِي وَمَا حَقَّ لِي بَادِي عَلَى اللَّهُ كُلْتُ وَاللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَعْلَمُ Mu'adh ibn Jabal رضي الله تعالى عنه was on a donkey with the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام and he said, O Mu'adh, do you know the right of Allah over his slaves and the right of the slave over his slave and the right of the slave over Allah? Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, Allah wa rasulu alam. He said, Allah and his messenger know best. He said, Haqqallah ala ibadihi ya'buduhu wa la, wa la, haqqallah, haqqallah ala ibadihi and ya'buduhu wa la yushriku bi shayin. Wa haqqal ibadihi ala Allah and la yu'adhiba min la yushriku bi shayin. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said, the right of Allah over his slave is that the slave worships him and him alone. and does not associate a partner with him. And the slave's right over Allah, and only Allah gives this right, the slave can't enforce this right, is Allah will not punish the one who, who rightfully actualizes Tawheed. Is that he won't punish the one who does not associate partners with him. Perfect Tawheed, actualizes Tawheed. The full worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without the things that the Ashuris do, who these guys sit with, who these guys make bayan and packs with, and say that it's okay, it's okay, Hamza Yusuf, it's okay, Bin Bay, it's okay, uh, Habib Jifri, it's okay, uh, Zayda Shakir, it's okay, this one, uh, to who, who believe in all kind of un Islamic practices, un Islamic understandings. Why? Because the Salaf of this Ummah did not have those understandings. The Salaf of the Ummah didn't question those ahadith. We're going by the Nasus. How can you say that we shouldn't deny and refute someone who says Allah is everywhere? And how can you say we shouldn't refute and deny and those theological debates are not important when people say Allah didn't descend and Allah didn't, uh, uh, didn't uh, uh, ascend above His throne? Allah said it. Allah prioritized it. قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ الرَّحْمَانِ عَلَىٰ عَرْسِ إِسْتَوَىٰ And you know the Qur'an better than me and know that in, I believe it's seven places in the Qur'an where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this. ثُمَّ إِسْتَوَىٰ عَلَىٰ عَرْشِ ثُمَّ إِسْتَوَىٰ عَلَىٰ عَلَىٰ عَرْشِ The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said in Sahih Hadith, I believe in Sahih Muslim, قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ينزل ربنا تبارك وتعالى كل ثلث الليل الآخر فيقول Our Lord عز وجل descends to the lowest heaven every last third of the night This is what Ahl Sunnah believes Why? Because the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said it We believe we don't have to ask how and we are not going to debate with people about it We accept the Nasus this is the Aqidah, this is the creed, this is the methodology and minhaj of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. It's not based on our desires and it's not based on having ta'awun with anybody. The people who oppose that. Can you imagine Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu doing that? You know why you can't? Because there's a hadith of the Prophet There's a hadith of, of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu when he found out about the Qadariyyah. Check it out in Sahih Muslim. In the Muqaddimah of Sahih Muslim. In the hadith uh, in the Ma'amal ibn Niyad. When he heard about the Qadariya and their bid'ah, he said, Tell them that I am, free f uh, I am free from them and they are free from me. They made an inkar of, of bid'ah. How is it you say you prioritize what the Quran says? Kuntum khayr al umm. 
أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْحَوْنَ عَنَ الْمُنْكَرِ Isn't that what Allah says? You said you prioritize with the Qur'an. Isn't that what the Qur'an prioritizes? Amr bi ma'roof and na'in al-munkar. And from the ways we command the good is calling to sunnah. And the way we make inkar is avoiding and warning against bid'ah and wa'ahliya. Go back to those books. It's amazing. What's worse is the deception, how it deceives the youth. This is why we have to speak about it. We don't want the youth to continue to fall into this stuff because after them, there'll be other ones. There'll be other people with other newly invented ways, newly invented methodologies. And there's going to be tons of people who still follow them. But if one or two people, a seed is planted to see, hey, my eyes are open, not from me. From the Quran and the Sunnah. Go back to the, how can you, you have to go back to those ahadith. Go back to the books and you'll see that what they're saying is false. Then go back to the Aqwal of the Salaf if you have the ability to do so. And there's plenty of things translated in English. You'll find out these are newly, these are things the Salaf didn't speak about. Even the Salaf from Ahl Bidah, they didn't cut the ties with the ulama. They did make takfir of the Sahaba. They did do that. But even then, they had their own form of understanding. So perhaps you could say they do have a salaf in that sense. Not saying that they make takfir, but they have a salaf in that they have a relationship with a, an aspect of the creed and methodology of the Khawarij. Because the Khawarij, what? One of the sifat of the Khawarij was jahil, is that they didn't have ulama from amongst them who said these things. Who from Mr. Uh, Dr. Qadi and Mr. Nu'man who do they have of ulama that say what they say? And ulama that are mu'tabirin, ulama that are acceptable, ulama that don't say that it's permissible to wear pants and, and the hijab is your hair, or something really strange that no Muslim has ever heard in the history of Islam until this time, possibly to the past 20 years or something. Just totally newly invented. Didn't the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Beware of the newly invented matters, for every innovation is a, is a going astray. The Prophet وسلم, said, The Prophet وسلم, said in Bukhari and Muslim, Whoever does a deed, in this religion, there's an, an innovative deed, which is not, not apart from this religion, then it's rejected. And then in another ruwaya in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu said, من أحدث في أمرنا هذا ما ليس منه فورد من عمل عملا Whoever does an innovative matter will have it rejected. So this shows us, as some of the imma say, the imams of hadith, that not only the person who begins the bid'ah, they're rejected, but the people who follow it and the people who do the action, <coughs> all of it is rejected. And all of it leads to the fire, as the Prophet ﷺ said. There's no newly invented madahib and manahij methodologies that we should follow. The Prophet ﷺ said on Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal, خطى لنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خطى ثم قال هذا سبيل الله it was a straight line ثم خطى خطوط عن اليمين عن يمينه وعن شماله وقال هذه سبل على كل سبيل منها شيطان يدعو له يدعو إليه ثم قرأ وأن هذا سراتي مستقيم فاعتبيوه the Prophet وسلم, said, as narrated by Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, the Prophet وسلم, drew a line for us. And then he said that this is the, the path of Allah. So he made a, an analogy from the line in the sand between the straight path and the straight line he drew in the sand. Then he drew one on the right. And then he drew one on the left. 
And then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, these are the paths. And at every path, there is a shaitan that calls to it. Then he read the ayat that we already mentioned. وَأَنَّ هَذَا سَرَاتِ مُسْتَقِيمٍ Verily, this is my straight path. Then follow it. Wallahi ya khwan, be... May Allah bless us with ikhlas with the bad Allah sunnah. May Allah bless us to be sincere to him and bless us to be firm on the sunnah. Because by Allah, we're going to hear so many strange things. What did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, افتركتِ اليهودَ لإحدى وسبعين فرقة وافتركتِ النصارى لإثنتين وسبعين فرقة وستفتركوا هذه أمة على ثلاثة وسبعين فرقة كلها في النار الواحدة كلنا من هي يا رسول الله قال من كان على مثل وما كان عليه وأصحابي اليوم the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the Jews broke into seventy one sects the Christians into seventy two sects my أمة into seventy three sects all of them in the fire except one and they said who are they يا رسول الله قال those who are upon what I, I'm upon and what my Sahaba are upon. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Let tattabi'oona sunnah min kana kablakum hudwa qudvati bil qudva hatta lo dakhalu juhur dhab la dakhaltumuhu. Qalu, Ya Rasulullah, al-Yahud wa Nasara, qala faman. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, You would follow the path of those people who came before you, handspan by handspan. Even if they fought, even if they crawled into the hole of a lizard, the dub and the dub, as I mentioned, and as the Arabs here, they verify for us that the dub, his hole is not a straight hole. It's a very difficult hole. You can't just stick your hand in a dub's hole and catch him. And dub, they're eaten here by some of the Bedouins. And Khalid, Khalid, uh, Khalid bin Walid, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, ate it. And the Prophet ﷺ was at his table and said, لَيْسَ مِنْ عَرْضَ قَوْمِ or لَيْسَ بِعَرْضَ قَوْمِ كَمَا قَالَ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم. The point being, it's very difficult to get in the juhr al dab the hole of the lizard, of this special lizard that lives here in the desert. That shows us that tashbih, that resemblance between the difficulty of getting in this hole and the difficulty of uh, uh, you know, and that, and, and that the people, our nation, the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would follow the, the nations, the Jews and the Christians to such an extent that even if they went in there, in this very difficult hole, we would do the same. And that's exactly what we do. We do it in our dress, we do it in our manners, we do it in our speech, we do it in our music, we do it in our culture, we do it in everything. We do it in our system of government, we do it in everything. Everything we follow them. But the shahid, the, the real emphasis here and where this hadith was mentioned as an explanation of another hadith or as a part of another hadith was a hadith of Abi Waqid al-Layfi radiallahu ta'ala anhu who said that we were new to Islam and, and, and we, you know, they wanted to make tabarak in the, in the tree just like the disbelievers did. And tabarak ayyul ahbab we know is a form of shirk but of course the Ashari Sufis wouldn't say that. They'll say that's a form of ibadah that we can pierce the hole of our Sufi Shaykh, pull out his guts and eat it. And I've seen videos of this. That we can, we can do these kind of things and, and come closer to Allah. But we believe this is shirk. And, according, and that hadith is one illustration of it. The shahid being, the Prophet ﷺ made ankar of that shirk. And that this hadith shows us we'd fall into shirk. So when you have people today who are now saying, and they're callers to Islam with a lot of popularity on TV shows. They're accepted by in governments. They travel around the world, this and that and the other. They're international. And then they're telling you that Tawheed, we're going to prioritize by the Quran, and then they're not really prioritizing by the Quran. They're only talking about the issues we deal with in America. That's very important. Our street issues or whatever issues, but they're not dealing with the issues of Aqidah and that those are theological debates, we should just throw them aside. But none of our salaf, who from the four Imams had a, a, think, a thought like that? And I think all of us, most of the Muslims would agree the fadl of those four Imams, uh, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, Imam Ahmed, Rahimahumullah Jami'an. And they all made ihtimam. Bil-Aqidah, Creed, and Tawheed. 
They all spoke about Tawheed. It would be easy to find statements from any uh, the Imams of the Salaf. And before them, the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who have more prestige and more makan and more manzil and, and they're, they're the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een. They dealt with the issues of kufr and shirk. Those are our priorities. What did the Prophet sallallahu say when Islam was going to a new people in Yemen with Mu'adh? He said, The Prophet said to Mu'adh when he was going to be sent to Yemen as an emissary to spread Islam as a da'i. This is what a da'i should be doing. He said, verily you're going to be sent to a people from Ahl Kitab, meaning the Jews and the Christians. Because Yemen at that time was, uh, you know, had Jews and Christians, probably, I think, predominantly uh, Jew at that time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. In the Kitab, he became in Ahl Kitab, that you're going to be sent to a people from the people of the book. The first thing you should call them to is the Shahada. It's Tawheed. It's to declare the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Salat, then the other aspects. So although we need to deal with the rectification of our communities, no doubt, I'm with that 100%, we need to work on their manners, we need to work on all those things. At the same time, we can never abandon that call to Tawheed and know that that's the asl. The asl of Islam, the asl of our da'wah and minhaj and methodology of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Those people who adhere to Kitab Allah wa Sunnat Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Tawheed. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La tazaw ta'ifatun min ummati dhahin in ala haq. There won't cease to be a group from my nation who continues to be on the truth. And no one will harm them who differs with them, nor uh, goes astray from them until the hour is established. Ayul Bab. From the Bab and the Siha, by Allah, I think, by Allah, you should leave and abandon those people. Leave and abandon. Don't listen to anything from Nu'man Ali Khan, no matter how appealing his tafsir might be to so and so, or to this one, or to that one, or no matter how you like Yasser Qadi's Tijweed program, or this thing, or that thing. Why? Why do I say that? Is it out of hasid? Is it because I don't want them, want good for them? Well, why I want good for them? I hope that Allah guides them. But because they are persistent, because they are firm. On misguidance. It's not like he made a mistake, he said some say, but they have a minhaj, a methodology which opposes Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Faham of the Salaf of this Ummah. So there's no way we can just accept that and just drink milk and sit and just, you know, and, and just sit and just be content with that. We, sh we, we can't want that for our brothers and sisters. And no matter what people think about you and so forth, but know, know that we, we shared with you this. And my advice to anyone is look into what I'm saying. If I'm saying the truth, then you should follow it. If I'm saying falsehood or you find mistakes, please advise me and please come with Dalil. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaytan. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika and ushrika bika wa ana a'lamu wa astaghfiruka limil a'lamu wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.